as many people get ready to take spring break off, or some folks might even be planning for their summer vacations, we thought it would be nice to invite some of our friends from Lake Chelan to share what's happening on the other side of the mountains. Joining us from the beautiful rolling hills of Siren Song Winery to give us a taste of their wine and also do a little cooking is owner and executive chef Holly Brown. Welcome back to New Day. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. I'm also excited to get ready to go to France. Ah, uh, yes. It's, okay. Uh, so we're it's all happening. <laughs> it's all. She's about like literally leaving for France in, within days from now. But I wanted to talk about what we're cooking with today because yes. we're cooking with herbs de Provence, which I don't really like. I've never loved. So you're going to change okay. me on that right, one. I'm going to. But tell us why we're cooking with herbs de Provence. Well, first of all, Herbe de Provence is uh, it's a it's an herb mix, right? Mm -hmm. And it's it's not like Italian seasoning. It's, it has these beautiful aromatics in it, like fennel and rosemary mm -hmm. and lavender. Okay. So it, you get this beautiful taste in the mouth, but also a beautiful fragrance like on an the aroma. nose. A really beautiful aroma. And in fact, you, it's so versatile that you can use it on almost anything. So I use it on roasted potatoes. I use it oh. on base, uh, roasted chicken. I'll do it on salmon from time to time. And then, of course, we're going to use it today to make Christini okay. from our beautiful French, French baguettes. baguettes. And because of the trip you're taking, that's mm -hmm. kind of what you wanted to pair this all with. And who, yes. who goes on this trip? Are you going by yourself? Like who's going no, on no, this no, trip? No, 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 no. It's a fabulous thing. So about six years ago, my husband and I, my husband's the winemaker at Siren Song, and I'm the executive chef. And mm -hmm. we just decided, we lived in Bone for quite a while, mm -hmm. and we spent a lot of time in France. And France is really the primary inspiration for us, for mm -hmm. Siren Song. It's kind of our Siren Song. Yeah. And so what we tried to do there is really replicate the kind of bistro life experience that you have in France with the kind of food and wine mm -hmm. and style and aesthetic and just relaxation, right? Yeah. So what we've done now is we've started to take wine club members to France, to all of our favorite places in France that have inspired our food and wine. Okay. <laughs> best <laughs> so, trip ever. It is the best trip ever. And you'll make friends of a lifetime because it's very intimate. We only take 18 people each year. So it's everybody kind of gets to know each okay. other. And at the end, it's a food and wine lovers tour. And at the end, um, everyone's best friends. Can I come? I promise <laughs> yes. I'll behave, Holly. I please, promise. Please, I would love it. I would have so much fun. <laughs> and Let's, you don't have to behave. Oh, good. Even better. <laughs> Drink um, lots of wine. Tell, I have been to Siren Song. I was blessed to go there last year um, with Kelly Hansen from Local Lens. Yeah. And we were blown away at the beauty and the warmth. But mm -hmm. I would like you to just share it with Siren Song. I mean, what it's like when you go there because it's not just a winery. I mean, it's like world-class cuisine and it's just such a vibe. Well, thank you. So, uh, Siren Song is set on the south shore of Lake Chelan. It's um, just a beautiful place. Uh, it's a seven acre vineyard property. We have an estate vineyard there as well as estate vineyards in other locations in Washington. Um, but it's a restaurant a winery. I have a cooking school up above the restaurant and a oh, winery. Okay. And then we also, it's a uh, place to stay. So you, we have a villa, which is like a two bedroom apartment that okay. you can stay in. Oh, and nice. then we have La Maison La at, at uh, Siren Song, which is where I have the cooking classes. But it's a destination cooking class um, experience where you can actually stay overnight. And that sleeps about 12 people. It's a five bedroom How hall. How cool. It's a You can drink all the maison. wine you want, y'all. <laughs> right. Well, I'm glad that we had a little extra time for this interview yes. so that I could ask you about all those things because I we don't get to you know, have Lake Chelan and, and Eastern Washington on the show enough. So I agree. I'm let's glad. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. So let's get to cooking. So okay. you Fantastic. are promising that I'm going to like the yes. Herbes de Provence yes. by the end of this segment. Right. So how do we make this Christine? Well, let's first talk about Herb de Provence okay. and let's do a little smell. So okay. whenever you're working with aromatics, it's really nice to just Put your nose in there, just like you would put your nose in a glass of Does that smell good? It smells it good. It smells delicious. It does smell I'm good. I'm going to have to really I'm work on you. you. Yeah, no, it, it does smell good. It smells very fragrant. Right. And, and from a woman who knows all about the nose of a wine, I trust that you right. know what's up. So we're going to come back to this in just a minute. Okay. But this is the beauty. It's all of these wonderful it's, herbs. It looks really nice. And it's really, it's, uh, it has this incredible aromatic. I wish we had smell of vision on TV so that you could really smell the pop of the fennel and the lavender, which are the two you can see the lavender in there. Yeah, those okay. are the pieces that I like the best. All right. So first, we got to start with our French baguette. 
Obviously. I have to tell you, um, it's, import it's important to know how to cut the crostini to get it right and to get that nice oblong shape okay. as opposed to a round shape. All right. So all you do is hold your knife like this, first of all, be careful with your knife. Okay. And then you want to basically cut on what's called the bias. Oh. So you just, you. I would have cut the wrong way. No, okay, you don't, me. you don't want to cut this and way. And not that way. No, no. So show what me. you want to do is you just want to saw into it here. Okay. Like that. Ah, Boom. Okay. And then just mm, about a quarter of an inch like that. Okay. Now what happens when you start doing this with a baguette, you go down, you're going to feel like mm, it's kind of getting thin at the or bottom. The angle is or the too angle angular. is getting weird. So what you do then mm -hmm. is, let's get that last one. This is a very okay. rustic baguette. Then you turn it over oh. and go this way. Right? Okay, that I have because I have cut crusty, and you know what? This also Whoop, is an boom. issue. <laughs> this is also an issue I have with bananas. Oh, you oh, know okay. when you're trying to cut bananas on the bias. So one of the things you got to do here, because especially with this rustic of a, a baguette, which is lovely, mm -hmm. and it'll be, it'll taste great, super crunchy on the outside. You want to make sure you really cut hard at the so at you're the not bottom. tearing it. So you're not tearing okay. it. Okay. But anyway, what you're trying to get is consistent width okay. and then this nice oblong shape so okay. that when you put things on it you see the crostini underneath it like it's almost the frame of the food. Ah, I right? see. Okay. So okay. you want it to be a little bit longer than yes. the food and, and, and showcase yes. it. Exactly I see. right. Okay. Exactly right. So the way we make crostini, and I'm going to give you one of these. Okay. I'll show, but you, you follow me along. Okay. So we're going to basically paint the bread. And what we want to do is make sure that we get a nice um, covering, including the edges, the not edges. just the middle. You don't want any white spots left because when you bake it, that's just going to be dry bread. Right? Aha. Okay. So, you, so it's okay to be a little liberal. You want to be liberal. Okay. And the other thing is, um, fat is flavor. So what we're doing here so is we're, not, we're adding flavor okay. and we're also, and we're adding moisture okay. so that when we put it in the oven and yeah. we're going to do it at 425 degrees for probably about, okay. um, if you don't do convection, I would say you're going to do it for maybe eight minutes. If you use convection, maybe five to six. So Copy just be that. careful okay. with that. Okay. So, so really nicely, liberally done, right? Okay. Then now the important stuff, we're going to take an herbed salt. This happens to be a uh, a fresh herb salt with a few herbs in it as well. Okay. And very lightly, because we don't want saltiness. We didn't paint all of these, but we're just gonna, yeah. we're just, this okay. is just made for television. Okay. So one of the things that we're doing, and you're doing it exactly right, is we're this raining so down. Good. Isn't that beautiful? Raining down. We're raining down. And the reason why we rain down, as opposed to dot, 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 yeah. is we have more control of, of the spread. Oh, right? okay. So we're getting even coverage. I see. So see? we're gonna do the same thing with, with the with your favorite <laughs> herb de Provence. Okay. And what we're going to do here, what's really important, yes. is while you're raining down, you're going to squish the herbs in between your fingers oh. because that releases the essential oh. oils and the aromatics. It's also okay. really satisfying to do it this is, as I right? make it rain herbs. <laughs> Amity is raining down. <laughs> raining down upon you. I love it. Oh, it smells really good with right? your fingers now, too. Right. Okay, so okay. now, so you're, now getting, you're getting a sense of what it's going to taste like when you're finished. So when, you, you're when turning you're taking me. it all in, you're right? You're turning me. Okay, so all we need to do is we just bake these off. So that oven is and on down there. The other nice thing about these, especially if you're yeah. doing, because all of these are sort mm -hmm. of appetizer hors d'oeuvre things, right. right? What's nice is that you can make these in advance. They can sit at room temperature. You can serve them at room temperature. Right. They don't have to be hot. And you have so. different kinds for each wine. Yes. And I, I wanted to, to, to point that out. Yes. Before we finish that up, I wanted to just point out some of the wines. So this yes. is... So this is the Jolie. This is a Bordeaux blend, mm -hmm. and it's going to go with a salmon, cream cheese, a little bit of, oh, nice, 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 nice. I like to start drinking and eating early. I do, I do. It's <laughs> never too early. All right, it's not, uh, mm, so good. Mm. All right, let me try it out. So when you, when you taste wine, mm -hmm. what you want to do is you want to put your nose in it, give it a nice, Mm. So that your olfactory mm -hmm. takes in the aromas, the flavors, and everything. Because mm -hmm. actually we taste as much with our, our nose as we do with our mouth. So then you taste. Swish it around so it gets oh, that's all good. around. It has a really nice fruity flavor. It does. Nice mouthfeel. Light, light acidity. Pairs so well with goes the, great. The, the salmon and, and the cheese. Yep. And the salmon's a little bit rich, and the cheese is a little bit rich as well, okay. so it cuts right through that. All right. So that's a Bordeaux blend. That's called And then Jolie. let's pair this one. So this one 
is a uh, Cab Franc, and this is actually from our estate vineyards in the Rocks District AVA, Ooh. which is a beautiful uh, vineyard. It's a beautiful AVA, and it is very similar to Chateau Neuf de Pop in mm -hmm. France. Mm. Very similar terroir. Mm. Okay. I, mm. Oh, that's good. Much richer. Mm -hmm. It goes with the fig jam. It has a much deeper, richer, kind of earthy flavor yeah. to it. So that's why we're pairing it with the fig jam over here. I can't believe this. We had all this time, but we've run out of time. Oh, okay. But essentially, to finish this crostini off, you would just yes. put the mozzarella and the cheese and yes. the tomato. Thank you, Holly, oh, so <laughs> much welcome. for coming. It was a pleasure. Thank you. And thank you for spending time with us today. You can check our website for more content. You can always send us an email to share your thoughts. But most important, get out there and enjoy your new day. We'll see you next time.